Welcome! Hi! I thought I'd do a few of these videos, uh, just even just for my own studies, out of my own interest. Uh, Multi-threading. I've been living 30 years ago. The free lunch of clock speeds are constantly going up. I mean, that's over. And it's sort of frustrating when I run a program and I'm trying to scratch out the milliseconds, if you know what I mean. And then on the side I see that I'm using about 16% of my CPU power. We need to get into multi-threading. I need to get into multi-threading. So let's start with the basics. Of course, um, we will, just to show how things are going, print some stuff out. And if we want to do multi-threading, we need the thread library. Okay, so how does multi-threading work? Well, typically, we spawn a thread and launch that into a process of some kind. Traditionally in C, this was just a, a void function, which could optionally take an argument. But um, yeah, a void function, which takes like a void pointer argument, and you could sort of get around passing data to a thread by putting in a point to a struct where the struct is sort of filled in with the data ahead of time. But C++ has a, a cool way of doing things. And that is we can use any sort of um, object that we want. It could be a function, a structure, a class as the, basically the thing that gets jumped into. And all we need to do in order to do that is define the uh, Opera. It needs to be. Uh, it needs to be callable. So the brackets operator needs to be defined. This looks a little funky, but what this is basically saying is the brackets operator. This is the function that defines it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a an example of a thread which doesn't work. So we'll give it some state. and we'll give it a constructor. There we have it. And alarm bells might be ringing off already because, well, if we take a rando as our constructor, then this whole process depends on some background state, which we don't necessarily know what that state is doing. So let's say, we want to um, print some stuff out. Okay, fair enough. So what we're doing is we're taking that state, that reference, and we're printing it out, and we're just doing that a hundred times. So this will basically, whatever number we start with, it'll count up a hundred times. Now let's make a function which will launch this, which I have very creatively named. Okay, so we'll get a local variable, set it to something, and then we'll put this in. So we'll create a process and initialize that. Okay. So this struct is set up, ready to go. Um, we will then launch it by creating a thread. So we'll make a standard thread. And yeah, so this thing that we pass in, it just needs to be a callable object, which means the, the call operator needs to be defined and that will be set up there. Okay, so just so that this actually does something, let's do the same thing on our end. We'll say, okay, this is happening in the original thread. And just to make it visual, I'll separate things off a little bit. And also to show the, the issue here, we'll go take the new thread and detach it. In other words, this thread that we've created will be completely running in the background. We won't really be able to communicate with it. 
and that sounds like a recipe for uh, a fun time. So we'll go. Um, sort of launch that and then end. So what do you think can go wrong here? Well, let's find out. So it looks like, yeah. So it looks like the original thread did its thing and it took a bit of time for the new thread to start. And this can have unpredictable results. Sometimes it works, sometimes it throws an exception. Uh, looks like it's sort of working at the moment, maybe because I'm flushing the buffers with um, the standard new line, end line. But anyway, this definitely might not be the, the um, ideal case. So what we can do if we want to improve this Set this all up, let it do its thing, and then join. And what join will do is this process will wait until the other process is complete, and then everything will exit all at once. Okay, so now if we run this one, we can see that the threads are doing their thing together and it looks like they're sort of executing in bunches and we can make this a little more obvious um, that they're not executing in bunches actually maybe they will yeah because this isn't mm, let's find out yeah they are sort of it's doing a few at a time so in the time it takes to run this we're going 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 and we can see this. So let's set it up so that the good thread, uh, this original function will definitely finish before the thread finishes and show that it is in fact waiting on the thread. Yeah, so the background does its thing and then it's waiting for the new thread to come in and then everything will exit. So, I mean, this is good, this is more stable, but clearly this isn't this isn't the ideal case. The ideal case is that we can make a thread and detach it and let it run in the background, but still have a way to communicate with it and to keep all of that stable. So to do that, we're going to modify this process a little bit. Okay, so for one thing, I'm not gonna take a reference unless it's really necessary. So here, there's no reason to take a reference. We can just work with that. But there is a case where I would want to take a reference or a pointer or something that shares memory. And that is, uh, what am I going to call this? I'll call this should exit. And that is when I want to communicate between things. So once I detach the thread, it runs in the background, but if I initialized it with a reference to something that I can mod that I can monitor and work with, then that's how I can that is how I can control the threads a little bit. All right, let me go. Okay, so the way this is going to work is. We're going to run through and when the when the thread reaches a point where it wants to exit we set that uh, variable to true and our main program can monitor that variable and you can imagine this would work the other way as well so let's say we have an OpenGL program and we have one thread which we want to run as fast as possible to update everything, run the physics and all that stuff. We have another thread which is running at 60 uh, frames per second, which is doing the rendering. When we exit from our program, we want to have a way to communicate with the background process and tell it to exit. So it would be 
taking this and instead of setting the variable, it would be monitoring and it would be saying, hey, every time if should exit is set to true, then exit out of the draw loop. And then we would sort of have a reflection system going on where in our program, we're also monitoring to check that the background processes have finished before closing the whole program. Right. Um, so we've got this. Now let's make a, a background thread example. Okay, so I need to control this from somewhere. So I'm actually going to take this in. I'm very imaginative. I'm going to take this in and pass it to the, the process. So I'm going to make a background process, which also takes in that KKKK. Okay, 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 okay. That's just double checking. Now we're not going to join. Okay, cool. So I detach that. That truly is running in the background. And what I'll do is I'll go um, set this variable. And then I'll have this little test here. Okay. So if we get to this point, but the background process is still running, then we would wait. And yeah, this is just a simple example of how to start communicating between a process and its background. Um, let's give that a go. And yeah, so as you can see, this thread does its thing and the background thread does its thing, but they're not limited. So if I sort of Let's set this to a thousand. Here we can see that uh, the threads. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, the threads are both operating sort of simultaneously. In fact, they're sort of interfering with each other. Maybe not such a good idea to uh, print out to the same terminal for multiple threads. But yeah, I mean... There it is. So that's how we get a background thread running and stable and not throwing any errors. Hope you found this fun. Code link in the description. And yeah, have a good one. Bye. So I want to give an example of how this could be used and where we're going with this. Let's say I grab this code from my C++ series and just sort of roughly refactored it to make it multi-threaded. It doesn't work at the moment. I'll explain why. So what we're doing is we have this Boolean that our um, class can modify from, from its own state. And that's a reference. So that is also being monitored by the main program. So the main program starts off and says, yep, the engine's running. It passes that state through to the renderer, so the renderer can have a reference to that. Then it sort of detaches the render thread as a background process. So um, this is where things get a little bit nuanced because, yeah, um, the Boolean that we set was, was pretty good because it was just read-only access from the main thread and it was only set once in the background thread. So that's a pretty safe case. But now we want to work with a windowing library because, well, the windowing library GLFW has an OpenGL context which can only be set to one thread. And at the same time, we want to be querying that window for inputs and things from our main thread for our game logic. So what we actually be doing is trying to synchronize these a little more tightly and then we'd continually be grabbing the context and setting a context to null. And then this event processing would work. Um, but yeah, let's just pretend that it's working right now. We get to the end. Um, so after the user has pressed escape, but then we just wait for a little bit while the background is doing its background process is doing its thing. We might need to free some memory and stuff. And we have that. Now, if we go up 
to the class itself. In the initializer, we do very little because what can we do? I mean, we'd want to do all of this, right? We'd want to make the window, set up some variables. We can probably set these local variables in the initializer. Um, but this stuff here, we want to make the vertex buffer object for our triangle and all of that. Problem is, if we... So it's a sort of a mistake to think that everything that's being done in an, a function for this class is being done in the background thread because it isn't. This initializer is being called from the main thread. So at the point here where we're in the initializer, the background thread has not been started. So if we do any OpenGL work here, it will be sort of thrown away because OpenGL can only work with one context at a time. And we could do context sharing, but yeah. Well, I, when I say context sharing, I mean what I was saying before about explicitly transitioning the context. But there's not much benefit when we're dealing with the engine's internal state. Anyway, side note, I mean, sorry, this whole thing was a tangent. This whole video was a tangent. So if I run this, I mean, yeah, it's, it's running. Frame rate's pretty high, but we're not properly synchronizing our data just yet. We're not properly sharing the GLFW window just yet. And that'll be the focus of the next video in this series. But we can at least be happy that our CPU usage has gone up. I mean, sort of artificially, we're forcing this to be single framed, and that's probably bad if we're just drawing a triangle. But the power has gone up. Anyway, so that's all I really wanted to add at the end of this one. In the next one, we'll be looking, in the next video, we'll be looking at uh, data structures, which we can use, mutexes, semaphores, and such to synchronize the operations between the threads so we can share data safely. Okay, have a good one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.